As we're growing up, the adults in our lives, they never really clue us in to one of the biggest facts of life, and that is choices. If we choose A, we can't have B, then we grow up, we become frustrated car folks, and we start pissing and moaning about engine placement and what engine we actually have in that placement. But what if we grew up and we didn't have to make a choice? We could have A and B. What would that world be like? Rennsport oder RS is a designation that means we don't have to make a choice between mid-engine and an engine that frankly is made of frankincense and myrrh, and that would be the one that comes from the 992 GT3. So it sounds like it's the same engine from a GT4, 4 liter naturally aspirated flat six, but that is not the case. This is made in Flocht. As a matter of fact, it is the engine from the GT3. They just turn it around because you've put it in the middle of the car as opposed to the back of the car. So what does that entail? Well, you have to change all the plumbing for the coolant, for the air intake, as well as the engine mounts and the exhaust. That in turn impacts the output, which this is 493 horsepower and 331 pound-feet of torque. Now, before you ask the GT3, that's 503 horsepower and 346 pound-feet of torque. Why is that more? Well, the change in the air intake, they are literally longer in this vehicle than in the GT3. Those longer intake runners translate to increased back pressure, which lowers the overall output of the engine. Now, for those of you that are aficionados of anything von Flacht, you will not be surprised to learn that this is a dry sump oil lubrication system. Now, beyond that, there is something that's interesting with this that it shares with the GT3, and that is six individual throttle bodies, which does improve the throttle response. Then, fuel economy, you know what, we're on a racetrack, we're not going to take this thing on the road, so we're not going to talk about fuel economy, but we will talk about performance figures, 0 to 60, 3.2 seconds, VMAX 196. Admittedly, you and I never thought this day would ever come, so arguing over the way probably something that's a waste of our time. Even so, 3,227 pounds, or depending on how you express your weights and measures, 1,463 kilograms. And before you ask, yes, that is heavier than a 992 GT3, which would be 3,164 pounds. With that, Willow Springs. Oh, yes! This... Oh my god, this is a Cayman? Yes, it's the seven-speed PDK, but this is not like other PDKs we've driven. It's been lifted from the 991.2 GT3 RS. Put another way, it's shorter gearing. I was chatting with the product manager of this vehicle for the US, and he was going on about how this is the shortest gearing they've ever put in a Cayman. Very noticeable in the way this thing delivers power. It's also noticeable in the way it shifts. Like you can leave it in PDK Sport as opposed to what I'm doing here where I'm shifting manually and it's much more noticeable shifts. Another key point here, unlike the PDK from other Porsches, top speed is not in sixth gear. It's in seventh gear because this flavor of PDK is not fitted with an overdrive gear. Now that we understand all the propulsion system, let's focus on 51% of why this vehicle drives the way it does, and that is all the changes to the driving dynamics. Now, first and foremost, this is not the double wishbone like in the GT3, at least in the front. This retains the McPherson struts all the way around from the Cayman platform. But like other GT cars, it has the helper springs. Now, why is that important? Well, pushing it on a track like this, there's more composure, especially when you're pushing it beyond its limits. Basically, it raises its limits with the helper springs. Now, a couple of other things that work in conjunction with that, the ride height you'd expect, yes, it is lower, 30 mils lower from a standard Cayman, but that works in conjunction with a wider track. Up front, six mils wider, in the back, eight mils wider. Then the toe, the camber, and the anti-roll bars, which are fitted as standard to this, all manually adjustable so you can set it up for the track. Now, how does all of that work in conjunction with the Cayman? Well, they make some other changes that make it not feel like a Cayman. 
So yeah, it doesn't have the double wishbones like the front and the GT3, but it does have the ball joints. So all the bushings are gone, no rubber there. And that in conjunction with a modified engine mount, remember it's a GT3 engine that's turned around, so they had to modify how they mount the engine. Now why is that important? Well, it makes it an incredibly capable track car, but it's the kind of track car you can abuse this thing all day. Like here's a real world example. I have been driving this thing probably for about two hours in the afternoon. There was another group of folks that came in and drove this thing for four hours in the morning at 10 tenths. Now granted, I'm doing what, six tenths here. And this thing, the only thing they've had to do is put gas and maybe check the tires. Now I can't honestly talk to you about road manners because I didn't get any time to drive this thing on the road. My guess would be this would be a harsh car to daily. Uh, and one of the reasons why it's not all the stuff we just discussed, but the suspension itself, the spring rates are specific to the RS. So it's different from even the GT4. Now stepping back from the actual suspension components, let's look at the steering. And this was an area where other Caymans could have used some improvement. Yeah, you've got no weight in the nose and it's McPherson's. There's some details you could change like they did in a 992 GT3, but that's incredibly expensive. I mean, I'm guessing that's how Porsche is keeping some distance between these two vehicles. That aside, you get in this thing and you immediately say to yourself, oh my God, this is a Cayman and one of the big telltale signs is the steering. Then there's the brakes, 408 mils in the front, 380 in the back, six piston calipers in the front, four piston calipers in the rear. Both cars I've driven today, I've driven this as well as the nine WASAP car, both have had the carbon ceramic rotors, which are larger than this. My guess is the steel rotor car is more than enough for this vehicle, considering the size, unless one is taking it to a track. Okay, so you and I have discussed propulsion system and drive dynamics, but there is a third act in this play, and that is the aerodynamics. Now, yeah, there's the obvious of the wing in the back, but let's start in the front. And there we notice a completely different chin spoiler. It's a bit deeper. Then there are NACA ducts, and also a Above the Naga ducts, you'll see there are slats in the carbon fiber front fenders. So it all works in conjunction to cool off the brakes. And if one looks a bit deeper at the carbon fiber fender, they change the shape, at least behind the wheel. So it works in conjunction with all the other ducting to further cool the brakes. And then underneath the vehicle, it is completely panelled, which brings us to the wing. And that, it should look familiar to you. It's got the same gooseneck design as in the GT3. And the idea there is to reduce the frontal impact of the wing. The wing itself is manually adjustable. And this is where we get into some unique aspects of this vehicle and why it's been this way on the track. 25% uh, more downforce than other Caymans. But on top of that, this wing in its highest setting, highest manual setting, is the same downforce as the GT3 in its lowest setting. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Options game, with today's contestant, something incredibly special, Von Flocht, something that I didn't think I'd see in my lifetime, the 718 Cayman GT4, wait for it, RS, for a base price of $141,700. Man, dreams do cost a lot. Uh, to give you an idea, that is $40,000 more than the base price of a GT4. Uh, this one is finished in Arctic gray. I'm not a gray fan, but with all the carbon fiber bits, it does look good. I don't know if it's worth $3,540. And the interior of this car, it's leather and not all Qantara, Porsche calls it race test, kind of a faux suede. Uh, this one has trim that's in blue. So the contrast stitch and these cars, they don't have door handles, they have straps, that is blue. I'd say it's worth $2,160. I'd like to see a different color than black. Then we press on to why this car is special. It's different than the yellow car you saw at the beginning of the episode because this one has something called the Weissach package. No, that is not a throwback to the rear suspension of 928. Rather, it's a carbon fiber package, or I should say carbon fiber reinforced polymer. So the hood that's exposed 
carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Then these cars, they have a ram air induction that changes from plastic to carbon fiber. And then the piece de resistance, the wing in the rear changes from poly to carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Rounding out the Vysok package are three dress up items. The most noticeable would be the engine cover. It goes from plastic to carbon fiber. Then the backlight, that's not the usual tempered glass one would see in a Cayman. That is lightweight glass like we see in other GT products. And this has a decal at the top that says Porsche. Kind of obnoxious, but I can see why they're going with this. And then the exhaust tips, not the whole exhaust, but the exhaust tips, they are titanium. This is $13,250. But wait, there's more. Those wheels, you can only get them with the lightweight Wysock package, but the wheels, you have to pay an additional, you ready for this? $15,640. Now that's a lot of money. They're not carbon fiber, they're magnesium. Porsche says that they're lighter, but they don't have the detractions of carbon fiber, meaning if you hit a carbon fiber wheel, we know that's expensive, but generally it's more of a problem on the inside of the wheel. That's why they chose this. Uh, then one can have those wheels painted to match other bits of the car. In this case, they're picking up the blue trim. This I am a complete sucker for. Well worth the extra $600, but one can choose other colors. Then if we didn't pay enough for carbon fiber, there is the window trim in carbon fiber. And it's not the whole daylight opening. It's just that small triangle at the base of the A-pillar. That is an additional $730. The chrono package, $310. The front axle lift system, first time ever on offer in a Cayman. Why is this optional vehicle with a nose like that? Uh, $3,040. From what I'm told by the product manager of this vehicle, it's already like a 70% take rate. So most people understand you need that. Uh, then the finally approved in the US, the LED Porsche dynamic lighting system, $2,020. The light design package for RS, $350. Then of course one needs fancy seat belts in an RS. In this case, we go from black to deep blue C, $360. Sun visors in race techs, $590. Smartphone compartment. This is optional in a $140,000 car. $560, the Bose surround sound system, $990. And the only other thing we add is the destination and handling Von Flacht for $1,350 for a total retail price of, for a Cayman, $195,190. So you may notice that I have changed my seat belts and the trim in the car from blue to yellow. In reality, I have changed the car. Uh, this is also a GT4 RS, but this one is not the Wysock package. This is the nine Wysock package. Now we discussed that in the options game as far as what it is, but you and I now need to discuss why it's important or is it even important? So basically you're trading in a lot of bits to get carbon fiber on the vehicle. And one of the biggest points they change is the intake in the rear. This car has ram air induction, literally not exaggerating. There are no side windows. Instead, there is a straight pipe that goes to a larger central air chamber that sits above the flat six. So it no longer has carpet like regular Caymans and that changes the sound immensely. It literally is behind your ear. <laughs> I'd almost want it in a GT3, but I digress. Uh, that works in conjunction with the Sport exhaust, which, just listen to it. You've heard this thing throughout the entire episode. Again, it kind of goes into the theme of this vehicle. <laughs> is it a Cayman or is it not a Cayman? Anyway, back to the Wysock thing. So you're trading in a lot of black plastic and some other bits for carbon fiber. So the idea is lightweight, but it's not a huge difference in weight. But then there is another option on top of that option to get magnesium wheels. That's where it makes a difference. It basically takes 22 pounds off of the wheels. And when you take weight 
off of the wheels, that's removing unsprung weight, which basically multiplies. So it does make a difference in the vehicle. Is it a huge difference? I honestly can't tell you. If I'm honest, yeah, I like the y -Sox package, the idea of it. Maybe there's like a hair of a difference only when pushing it on limits like this. But if I'm completely honest, I think the y -Sox package is all about resale and aesthetics of the vehicle. Now they're toying with the idea of a Porsche individual where they do carbon fiber half and half on the hood. So it'd be painted in the center and carbon fiber out onto the sides of the hood. So this was a rather unusual day at the office. I uh, didn't expect to come in and think this thing would suck. If anything, I expected to come in and not love the GT3 anymore. And that, that's not the case. I still prefer the GT3 over this. Those double wishbones, that's the thing that really separates these two vehicles apart, not just the engine placement. But I don't know how else to put this, but this, it's a magnificent thing. I want one, I want a GT3 more, but I want one of these as well. And this is where we get to the wish list. I really got nothing. I, I, what am I gonna talk about? The cup holders suck. The only thing I'm really gonna push for, the club sport package. You see this one, it's got the roll cage. You can't get that in the US because US. Can we sort this out? Because I could see people who really are going to use a vehicle like this. And that's what I want these things to be. I want people to use them, not sit in the garage and do nothing. And if the club sport package is on offer, I think more people would use them my logic here and this is the point of the episode where I turn this around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media Motoman TV on word Motoman TV on word Facebook Twitter and Instagram uh, and with that I'm gonna leave you a little bit behind the scenes uh, so I drove an electric car here it was part of the Volkswagen group as a matter of fact it's a rebadged Porsche Taycan uh, and apparently the folks at Porsche when they did a program here for the Porsche Taycan they put like a super fast electric charger in their like garage over there. So I charged up my car in like two hours while I was driving this. Until I see you in the next episode, be